Now, one of the most common questions we got in the stream, Cross, when do we actually unlock Strand? Well, guys, that doesn't actually happen until after you complete the campaign. Yes, you do get to play with Strand in the campaign, but it's just moments of empowerment. You have Strand for a second, and then it goes away. You don't actually get to keep it slotted as a subclass and use it. Today, though, we do want to talk about how to actually update your entire Strand subclass. This is essentially to fully kit it out. And similar to previous subclass updates, we are required to purchase all of the subclass abilities, including Fragment. And yes, unfortunately, this is separate on each character. So if you're like, my God, these things cost so much, well, get ready. Because you're about to do it on three different characters? Now, to buy new Strand Fragments, as well as other abilities, you need a new currency called Strand Meditation. Now, each new Fragment costs 200 Strand Meditations, which is pretty expensive. So when you spread that over 14 Fragments across three different characters, Strand Meditation Farming is definitely something you're going to have to get used to. Now, I do want to talk about Fragment Availability, because Bungie loves time-gating things. Even if you have have these strand meditation fragments to spin not all fragments are currently unlocked and as of making this video we only have six fragments available for purchase that includes thread of wisdom thread of finality thread of ascent thread of fury thread of mine and thread of warding now next week's reset is actually going to unlock four of the fragments this is thread of rebirth thread of transmutation thread of propagation and thread of evolution and then the final four fragments those unlock after the day one raid completion that includes thread of isolation thread of binding thread of continuity and thread of generation. Now the trend here is that these fragments do get progressively more potent, hence why Bungie locks them and I'm sure this is something to do with day one raids. Personally, I just hate things that are time gated, but this is Destiny 2 and time gating is just a part of its DNA. Now we're going to be getting into all of the strand fragments within the next week and a half, talking about builds to use, but the best thing you can do though, even now, is just to stock up on strand meditations until they become available. The cap for these materials is 1500, which is a fair bit, so the only question that remains is, how do we farm these? The first source you'll receive meditation from is the Puka Pond. After unlocking Strand, you'll be given 500 meditation to buy two aspects and one fragment. Now, you really want to spend these on the aspects. 150 per aspect plus a 200 fragment. This consumes pretty much all 500. And if you complete the legendary campaign, check out our guide, by the way, you'll also receive another 300 meditation when you talk to Nimbus. You can use these to buy the two remaining grenades and another fragment. Luckily, grenades only cost 50 each. Again, though, keep in mind, this is all post completing the campaign. Now, after that, you'll need to spend time patrolling the Amuna to earn more. Now, there's a number of resources that you can get, strand meditations, and let's break them all down. First up, Neamuna, high value targets. You receive seven strand kills anywhere. You have a chance of getting one. Patrols, reward somewhere between seven and eight. Neamuna quests and missions, between 15 and 20. Public events, at least for heroics, give somewhere between 25 and 30. And Nimbus rank 18 gives you 200. Now, the best farm for strand meditation is the terminal overload stage three public event. These are the big public events with the purple icon. They give 75 strand meditations. And the beautiful thing about this is that you can pick up patrols, you can kill high value targets, and you can be rocking a strand subclass. And so you're essentially double dipping in strand meditation farming. But I will say guys, it is quite challenging, especially if you don't have an instance where other players are there. And just trying to do these solo, guys, I would not recommend it. Again, get a fire team. Even if you don't want to even speak to them, come by our Discord Discord, pick up a fire team. Terminal overloads are very challenging. Hopefully, you'll be in an instance where people are farming this. And once this gets out, that this is the best way to farm strand meditations, hopefully, your instance will be full of people doing this. However, Les and I did find ourselves alone multiple times doing this activity. Now, the best way to think of this activity is if you remember Seraph Bunkers in Season of the Worthy. This is very similar, but much better. This activity is about crown control and also speed. You have multiple bosses that you're going to have to kill in about a minute to progress to the next stage. Stage. And there's different things you may have to do here. You may have to actually cap a plate, spawn a boss in, instantly melt it. What I do recommend is anytime you see one of these glowing Vex, when you kill them, they drop these lasers. No lie, guys, these lasers put in work. If you find yourself underleveled or not doing enough damage to the boss or you're just trying to conserve ammo, pick up these lasers, guys, and just laser the boss to death. They're not in every encounter, but anytime you do see them, pick them up. Now, I want to talk about loadouts for farming. There are lots of solar and void shields, which is why we mentioned Star Class being such a good option. Wither Horde is also really, really good. I was using Abbey and Leap, which we showcased in our review yesterday, guys. It was putting in work with Suspend, but Deterministic Chaos. That machine gun was actually doing pretty good. It has a weakened effect. It also has a volatile effect, and it does great against Void Shields. Now, this event is on a daily rotation. Yesterday was actually the Zephyr Concourse. Today is the Ahimsa Park, and tomorrow will be the Liming Harbor. Now, even if you're not looking to farm, it's also important to play these at least once 
to progress the Strider Winter Bite Exotic Quest. Matter of fact, when you get to this step, it will require you to spend an overload key in each patrol zone. This will take three days to complete. No, they do not rotate weekly and they don't rotate throughout the day. I wish it did because I actually missed this quest step with Zephyr's Concourse because unfortunately, it does not retroactively complete. Now, after completing the event, two chests will drop. One of them will be free and the other one will require an overload key. Both chests will award Neomuna weapons and these weapons seem to be tied to the daily rotation as well. Now, from our research and correct us if we're wrong, we believe this is the loot drops that are tied to the activities. Zephyr Concourse is the machine gun circular logic. Ahimsa Park is the shotgun Basso Ostinato. And Liming Harmor should drop the SMG Synchronic Roulette. Now, the chest that requires the overload keys drops 75 strand meditation. So again, getting these overload keys is imperative for this farm. You can actually hold five in your inventory and five in your postmaster for a total of 10. Now, there are several sources for these overload keys. Number one, you've got Nimbus. He actually has an upgrade at level 13 that unlocks a daily bounty for a guaranteed overload key. That's one free key a day. Number two, Vex Incursions actually drop Strand Meditations and eventually an overload key. And this reward is not immediately available after completing the legendary campaign. We believe it's tied to a new moon quest, but we're not exactly sure which one. Vex Incursion is similar to the Darkness Zone on Europa. More ads and public events. And there's even a special public event called Vex Strike Force. This guarantees an overload key and should guarantee an exotic drop upon completion. I will say this though, guys, it does not come around often. I did not get one to actually spawn for me. And I literally hung out in this area on and off all day. And I never could actually get one. Now, Les got one to spawn for him. He completed it and an overload key as well as an exotic dropped from. Now, what we're wondering is if tomorrow the terminal overload and Vex incursion, again, guys, these are two separate activities, if they could overlap. Now, the final way to get overload keys, which is honestly the best way to get them, is chests and Neomuna patrol zones. These are random drops. To find these chests, you just want to slot on a combo booster mod onto your ghost. This will mark locations of chests and planetary materials. And there's a good chance when you're picking up those planetary materials, you're double dipping into some of the exotic quests that you picked up. Now, keep in mind, you can do other things as you go for these chests. You can run patrols, kill high value targets. On top of that, remember guys, you have regional chests on Neomuna, which is actually tied to one of the quests. So just slot on a combo mod and run around. And when you see a chest, feel free to pick it up. So for the gameplay loop, farm for overload keys using your preferred method. Play the terminal overload public event. Multitask strand meditation farming by doing trolls, killing high value targets using strand. Beat stage three profits. Now let's talk about reputation gains. Another benefit of farming terminal overloads is actually reputation gains with Nimbus. Currently after completing one of these events, there is a bug that allows you to reset the free chests in terminal overloads and open it again. Each time you open it, it actually grants you 100 Neomuna reputation. So if you want to level up Nimbus as well as get your strand unlocks, you want to play this activity. You really want to get the rank up unlock upgrade terminal overload key chest. This actually guarantees a unique terminal overload weapon to drop from the terminal overload key chest. Long story short, guys, craftable weapons, or at least a chance of getting deep sights to then craft these weapons. Now, this has nothing to do with strand meditations, but I do want to bring it up. There is a rank 30 upgrade called Neomuna Ingram upgrade. It actually increases the rewards from Neomuna Ingrams. Keep in mind, though, you cannot select that upgrade until all Neomuna Ingrams are claimed. I know. I was starting to pile them up. I was like, oh, baby, I can't wait. I'm going to get to the end. I'm going to have all these Ingrams piled up. I'm going to get the double rewards and hopefully get all my deep sights and crafted weapons at rank 30. That's not the case. So yeah, pick those Ingrams up. So guys, you can grind out all of these right now. But again, there's no rush. These fragments are time gated. You're not even going to get the final fragments until after the raid goes live. Again, you can only hold 1500 strand meditations at one time. But that means you can buy all the fragments on one character when the next week launches and two extra for another as well. You'll still need to do these each week to get them all, but you can at least give yourself a head start on getting everything locked down. And keep in mind, a huge reason why we want to get these fragments and unlock them is not only to get the most out of our strand builds, but also because we have to unlock every fragment to get the new exotic strand sidearm. So guys, that is our strand meditations and terminal overload key farm. I hope this helps. Again, we'll be farming this all day long. Feel free to come by our Twitch. Fellas and ladies, thank you all for coming and watching. And as always, slap that like button like your mama told you right. Oh,